The tiny nation of Kosovo has seen its share of hardship in the past decade, emerging from war with the challenges of building a new democracy and a healthy economy. Kosovo's financial woes have only been exacerbated by its lack of energy in the recent years, something its government and the World Bank want to solve with a new coal-fired power plant. The proposed 600 megawatt plant is slated to be built in the Obelich region, just five miles from Kosovo's capital city, Pristina, where two older existing coal plants have already created an environmental nightmare. In fact, while the Kosovo Institute for Public Health has made no comprehensive studies on the overall health effects of the coal plants in the region, studies in the USA show that pollution from coal plants cause over 13,000 premature deaths each year in America and cost over $200 billion a year in health care. There can be harmful effects to the, the skin, the eyes, the breathing passages, you know, things that come in direct contact with these substances, but also further along, it's well recognized there can be damage to the kidneys, uh, uh, pul uh, pulmonary problems, respiratory problems, cardiovascular problems, um, and even leading out to neurologic issues, difficulty in learning. And all of these things can result as well in premature death. What these kids don't realize is that they live above the fifth largest reserve of lignite coal in the world, enough to power its new plant for the next half century, something the Kosovar government sees as an economic no-brainer. But this vast resource may prove costly for Kosovo's hopeful entry into the European Union as member states pay increasing taxes on their CO2 emissions. Europe is going in the direction of low carbon and zero carbon electricity sources and moving towards generation from renewable sources like wind power, wave power, uh, solar power and a whole range of other technologies. That means any individual power plant that emits carbon dioxide has to at the moment pay uh, 13, about 13 to uh, 20 euros for every tonne of carbon dioxide that comes from a plant. Over time that cost will go up for every single tonne. But here's the thing, the worst most polluting possible option um, which will cost the most in the long run is basing your power on lignite, the single most carbon intense form of uh, energy that you could possibly have. One man who has taken up the war on coal is Nezir Sinani, former spokesman for the Kosova Energy Corporation. Now part of a civil society coalition against the new plant, he spends most of his time in Washington DC trying to convince the World Bank to take a closer look at improving energy efficiency and exploring renewable energy in Kosovo before approving the new coal-powered plant. We did see the need to convince all the stakeholders that Kosovo doesn't need an energy strategy which solely 
focuses on using Lignite, but to diversify it and see what are the other options within Kosovo. We've got many problems that are affecting our energy sector today, and if we tackle those problems at this stage, we would avoid the need for new generation capacity in, in the near future. And these problems have mainly to do with the energy losses, which today in our country exceed 37% of all generated and imported electricity in the country, and that's a huge problem. If we have a new coal plant, a 600 megawatt new coal plant, what we will be doing is just increase the amount of electricity which we produce out of coal, but at the same time increase the energy losses. We got connected with the Kosovo project uh, primarily through some NGO partners that we have uh, and also some Kosovans that we met in uh, DC who were there trying to raise the issue, raise the profile of a very destructive project that the World Bank is considering supporting. And when we dug into it a bit more, we found out that it's actually our government that is really pushing this project, that the project has no life within the World Bank without the support of the United States. In 2011, a low-level official from the U.S. Department of Treasury wrote a letter to the World Bank, quietly urging it to push the Kosovo project forward. We felt that it was really uh, something that we needed to become involved in. In D.C., what we are seeing is that the policymakers are becoming sensitive to this project. It's quickly becoming the next problematic project in the pipeline. The bank has been jittery about coal financing since the widespread outcry came over its $3.75 billion loan in 2010 to the South African power company ESCOM for the construction of the third largest coal-fired power plant on the planet. We traveled with Nazir Sinani to South Africa in December 2011 for the UN Climate Change Summit to see how South Africans were benefiting from the new coal project. The new 4800 megawatt Madupi power station is being built just a few miles from the Marapong Township in the Limpopo region, where 15,000 residents live beneath the towers of an existing power plant of equal size. A group of Maripong residents have begun organizing over concerns about the new power station's impacts on local health, jobs, and displacement. Among the main organizers is Martha Malopo, temporarily employed by the Madupi power station. People are experiencing uh, an air pollution, of which they believe is being caused by the ESCOM flying ash. And uh, most of the people are experiencing some <coughs> Uh, disease like TB, uh, asthma, and others, mm, and sinus also, yeah. The air quality issue, last week when we were there, we had people saying people are now getting more sick, people are complaining of headaches, also there's no water, and I'm just wondering what is going to happen in five or ten years to come. Um, it's, it's, it's a slow genocide of the people living around those areas. With help from environmental groups, Earth Life Africa and Groundwork, local citizens filed a complaint to the World Bank, which sparked an 18-month investigation by an independent World Bank panel. The investigation recently concluded that the World Bank, in fact, had failed to properly consider health, water scarcity, and environmental impacts before granting the loan for the plant. We feel that we have indicated because all the issues that are raised um, by the World Bank Inspection Panel that the bank failed to actually follow its own policies. But the power plant has been built and uh, it cannot be reversed unless if people have got supernatural powers to make the plant not to work. The World Bank cannot handle climate finance when at the same time the World Bank is destroying the planet, is destroying the climate. These similarities are striking and tell us that despite the fact that the World Bank says that they will invest uh, in such projects in accordance with the best standards applicable today in the world, that that's not the case. And we can more or less expect that the same problems will be repeated in Kosovo. We've been trying to convince the World Bank to step out of the uh, financing of dirty energy in other parts of the world. And, and unfortunately, the next country where the World Bank is putting money in coal is, is Kosovo. While activists from Kosovo, South Africa, USA, and other nations begin to unite against new coal projects,
The World Bank president, Robert Zelik, defends the bank's decisions to continue coal financing. How do you affect the fact that if South Africa doesn't have electricity, that people won't have jobs? How do you affect, you know, its effect on various industries that are dependent on that electricity? The civil society from South Africa here has told us, the cost of our civil society, that the example, that's, that's why ESCOM was built under that excuse, that it will bring electricity to the poor. What actually happened is that the electricity became too expensive to go to the poor because of the new coal power plant. Why are you still determined to build a new coal power plant in Kosovo, the European ESCOM. The proposal is to shut down a 40-year-old uh, power plant that is the single worst power source in southeastern Europe. In its place, it would clean up another aging power plant and build a more efficient one. Now, like you, we've asked a lot of questions about what alternative energy sources there could be, because that would be our preference uh, under most environments. One of the things we developed, particularly for coal, is to create an independent panel of experts to review the proposal. Meanwhile, the Kosovar Civil Society has turned to Dr. Daniel Kamen, head of the Renewable and Appropriate Energy Laboratory at UC Berkeley and the World Bank's former chief technical advisor on renewable energy and energy efficiency to conduct a comprehensive study on Kosovo's alternatives to lignite energy. Dan Kamen came to Kosovo after receiving an invitation from the head of Kosovo Assembly, Mr. Jakub Krasnici, to come and assess the energy potential in the country. Uh, the invitation was sent uh, to Dr. Kamen at the time when he was at the World Bank, and uh, the World Bank thinking that uh, Dan Kamen's visit would interfere with that project of pushing forward the coal project within the country, uh, they rejected uh, the invitation of Mr. Krasnici and refused Dan Kamen's uh, visit to the country. But uh, his visit was uh, fortunately uh, done at the latest stage when Dr. Kamen actually uh, gave his resignation to the bank and uh, did manage to come together with his laboratory to the country and uh, assess the energy potential uh, in Kosovo. What you said in the conference is that Kosovo has capacities to produce 38% of energy not coming from coal. Can you confirm this? I can confirm that. Using a reasonable amount of solar, a reasonable amount of wind, and biomass, along with hydro, provides enough options so that for roughly the same cost, but paid up front, not paid over 20 or 30 years, that there's a scenario that meets Kosovo's current energy needs and for the expected amount of growth. And one of the key aspects of the story is that energy efficiency needs to become quite central. Three weeks after Dr. Kamen issued his findings on Kosovo's potential for renewable energy and increased efficiency, the World Bank's expert panel released their report on the project. The recommendation of the expert panel to the World Bank was that the coal plant which the Kosovo government has proposed to get the partial risk guarantee from the World Bank is actually in line with the World Bank uh, policies. The expert panel's recommendations now pave the way for the World Bank to make its final deliberations in 2012 on the fate of Kosovo's new coal plant project. In doing so, the World Bank's fossil fuel legacy may determine Kosovo's energy future for generations to come.